hit in 2006 by a roadside bomb. Uh, I was in the gunning position of my home Normal concussion, and one gets them down there if you're in the turret of a um, So I stayed in country with massive headaches, didn't really pay attention to what was going on. I was just doing my job. And then three months later, my best friend and two others were hit behind me. And um, I, I had a huge virus guilt from that. Ended up getting uh, nerve, my, half my face didn't work, Bell's palsy. And so they sent me back to Washville. Didn't really want to go, but knew to. And I was expected to return to country after everything was resolved, but had an MRI and they said, your nerves are completely screwed up, you're gonna have brain surgery, um, resulting from the initial blast. And so that was the end of my career. And so massive PTSD and I'm now living with constant pain, um, 24 hour headaches. So that's me in a nutshell. Um, but three years ago, I was invited to go on a climb to Code Epoxy, 19,000 feet. That started my adventure. And then after that, the guy said, hey, do you want to go to the South Pole? And I looked at him like, mm, yeah, no. Pole <laughs> 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 weighs more than me. Um, it's 150 pounds, and I will die. But um, I showed a lot as a female, um, and I think that this was the first time Ed was accepting females to go on expeditions. And so I took a lot of pride in that I could be one of the only three females on this expedition. So I was accepted. And um, being with Therese and Kate, they are massive influences to me. Um, so I went, and that's my story. Um, and then, so here we are in Cape Town. It was about 80 degrees there. Um, sorry, first, I have a TDI. Might not remember anything. There we go. Um, <laughs> here we are in Cape Town. It's 80 degrees, and this was our transport to Novo, where we first start off our um, expedition. Or, yeah, expedition. And we get to get changed on the plane into what looks like the um, story in the movie where they keep the little boys packed up in a snowsuit. We're just packing around in this airplane, putting on everything we can to be as warm as possible when we get off the plane. And Inga leaves the plane looking like that. We should have all <laughs> learned from Inga that we don't need to be that warm. But we were sweating bullets when we got off. <laughs> <laughs> when we got off, it was, we didn't have the nighttime anymore. It was sunshine for the next some of the guys thought it was really fun to put oxygen in our nose. That would give us a high or anything. <laughs> and then a conversation when we finally got to the starting point at 89 degree was a massive, it was really important. Um, so we stayed there at the 89 degree before the race started for about two days, just skiing around with our pulse without anything going about four hours out, four hours back just getting used to the land, the Sistrugi, which was huge ripples in the snow. And then the race finally started after we got all of our poles, all of our equipment, getting used to the temperatures down there. And then <coughs> this is what it would look like on a normal day. Uh, the birds were tickling from the US, <laughs> racing as fast and hard as that we could. Um, didn't pan out too well for them. <laughs> we'll hear why later. The U.S. took it slow and steady. You were the hair. The tortoise, no, the tortoise, we the tortoise. Sorry. And um, the Commonwealth team was just unlucky. Very unlucky. <laughs> um, daily routine was we would wake up two hours before we had to get out of our tents. Boil water for our food. Uh, boil water for what we needed to drink for the day because we could not get dehydrated. Very important. Um, get 7,000 calories was very important, very crucial, so we would have enough energy to pull 150 pounds <coughs> of weight behind us. Get all of our tent packed up, our sleeping bags, everything into our pulse so we could leave by 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. And then we would ski. Well, this is us boiling water, and then our thermoses. Very tight quarters, but if you were 
diligent about keeping it clean, it worked. And for those that didn't have legs, it was even better because there was more space. <laughs> <laughs> so 9 hours of steam, every two hours you would take a break. You have five to ten minutes to cram in as much food in your mouth as possible because you didn't want to get cold. As soon as you start eating, the blood goes to your stomach, so your hands and your nose get cold. That's where you get frostbite. And you have all your food in the front of your pulp, and you would um, talk, be able to talk to your friends, get that motivation. Then you would go to the bathroom, anything you needed to do in that five to ten minute break. But then you would have Inga screaming in your ear, saying, get ready, get going, get all your stuff on, go. <laughs> and Ed would be at the back room. Are you guys okay? <laughs> so we had two different, were very wonderful guys that were helping us the whole way. This was how the brakes went. Sit on your pole, put on your puppy, because the winds were blowing uh, 40 miles per hour. I don't know, some days it was just brutal, but some days it was, you could just sit out there and think, this is an awesome place, I can live here. Um, but in the middle of the day, you'd have top ramen and just eating it as fast as possible. Most of the time it was on my coat. I don't even know where I was going. Um, and for Ivan, you know, he needed help some days, so we all took turns trying to help Ivan with, because, you know, he has to work with his puppy gloves. And, you know, we were a huge team. It worked. Um, evening routine was easier because there was more time in the evening, so we'd get the tents up, we had time to uh, write in our journals, listen to our iPods, listen to our books on tape, go into the, once the race ended, we um, started doing just a, a walk with the other team, so we'd go into the other tents, see what life is like for them. It was easier. Um, and then our, our food was British food, so <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> you'd have to keep that up. And Al Skarsgård, um, our actor from the American team, wanted to eat twice as much as I would want to eat, so I would be shoving him as much food as possible. Uh, but it was, we all brought our own kind of snacks that we want to eat, um, so the Snickers was a uh, godsend. I was like, please give me more Snickers, what do you guys have? This stuff was terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> And um, so this is what it looked like inside the tents, just lots of sleeping bags, lots of drying out your socks, making sure everything is dry. And, and then I will give it to 